discuss during these two days, like quantity and quality. Uh, also, thank you for mentioning the ministry, the Minister of Defense, with whom we cooperated for this conference, and we also recognize the professional skills. Um, now we will move on to our next uh, presenter, Ms. Elena Lisitkina from the National Academy, the National Guard of Ukraine. Thank you very much. Okay, I would like to talk about stereotypes because media is very good at placing stereotypes uh, about women on us. Actually, um, do we have it with us? Um, actually, looking at media, I would uh, um, pay attention that there are some sources of uh, media stereotypes that are most influential. These are advertisements, movies, uh, serials, cartoons, uh, reality shows, political talks, show, talk shows, and campaigns. And we see that uh, regularly from newspapers, <coughs> and, uh, TV, and all that. Uh, the analysis of uh, the content of modern advertisements show that there are basic concepts that are uh, implemented and realized in advertisements. And it's fine, but now you see that the, um, the mechanisms that are used in advertisements to uh, force people to buy more, they are used also in all, by the media, uh, they are used uh, to pursue a lot of different um, aims and they are very influential on the society. Uh, speaking about movies, cartoons, and serials, recent, uh, recent uh, research showed that there are two basic concepts for how women are visualized in movies. Uh, one basic concept is that you have bad character and then you are also successful in the career, or the researcher is that if you are like really a symbol of femini femininity, then you have love, uh, happy marriage, and good family. So uh, the model here presupposes that there is an option, either or. But actually, and a lot of uh, females in uniform as well, they show that it is possible to pursue both and to have career, to have family, and <coughs> to realize yourself in a lot of different aspects. As for special movies about females in uniform, I would say that um, if you look at different media contents, then they have kind of ranks or rates, and uh, like the sexiest women in uniform in movies and all that stuff. So again, I uh, hear what women bring to the forces is fragility, beauty, something like that. It's not about professionalism first. First it is about something that only women possess, like this. Okay, this is for us to think about. Um, then, the reality shows. I'm not speaking about Kim Kardashian and the uh, stereotypes that she brings to the society. I'd uh, like just to give an example from Ukrainian uh, TV program. This is for last Saturday, but the situation is the same for every week, for practically every day. These are the names of shows, reality shows shown on TV. So, to marry a millionaire for weddings, then uh, return me my beauty. So, even the content or the titles of them show what actually a woman should pursue. This is to marry, to have a good family, and to be beautiful. It's not about career, it's not about self-realization. Then, speaking about politics, we can, uh, again, this is to reiterate the idea uh, of the first day of our workshop, that we need a network, we need to support each other, and this is what we lack. Uh, it's not a secret that more than 50% of white females in the States <coughs> voted against Hillary, so they voted for Trump. Uh, despite all the uh, uh, comments he gave on TV, and not only uh, those from last decades, but also the behavior and all that stuff. 
And it's not only the uh, United States model, it's the same in Ukraine. As soon as you have a politician uh, doing something that the establishment does not approve, then, okay, this politician, if she is a female, she should think about, or if she is given a, a kind of advice, she should um, build a family, she should take care of her children and not go into politics, something like that. I've never heard something from the perspective when one man addresses another and saying that he should pay more attention to the family and children instead of going into politics. This is a stereotype again, and we are under the influence of these stereotypes. Uh, now, propaganda tools. There are so many uh, different tools that are used nowadays in media. Uh, especially speaking about news. And here uh, we can just point the main of them. First of all, propaganda, this is how it is different from strategic communications, for example. This is more about big lie, and the bigger the better. Uh, that's why different exaggerations and concentrated pains are used to show any event. Again, uh, visualization and properly structured narratives when speaking about women, war, peace. Like a typical narrative, uh, females, so a war or a conflict. And of course, females and children are the first victims of any conflict. That brings despair, then no future. Uh, and um, really, there's the situation, how it is described normally in media, is that there's no future, there's no perspective. It's not about what women can do to change the situation. And again, this is one of the things we should think about. Um, yes, the, of course, there are happy stories. I like the um, last Olympics when we had an example of uh, a sportsman <coughs> from Syria who was very brave and courageous, and then she also <coughs> showed quite good results at the Olympics. Um, and, but this is like a reason in a bun. And of course, if you add, if media adds a lot of reasons in, into a bun, then of course this bun won't be good as well. So there should be some proportion of happy stories in the general content of media that is suggested. So, Wrapping up everything, I would suggest several issues for consideration, uh, speaking about the impact of media on women, peace and war. Actually, how to avoid the stereotype prediction. Once it was at, uh, this year at the NATO annual conference on gender perspectives, we were shown a short video about ch uh, children in the kindergarten being influenced by stereotypes. They were asked uh, to paint a, um, a fireman, then uh, whoever, a surgeon, and uh, a policeman, or a police person. And of course, in the perception of children, all these people were males. So, that shows that stereotypes are embedded at very early age, and then it's more difficult to ruin them. Then, uh, where's the truth in media, visual, uh, reality and virtual reality because what is created sometimes is artificial. How to say where's the truth? How to um, how them to promote this truth in the media? <coughs> then another <coughs> thing is that if all war narratives and peace narratives and war narratives, security narratives, they are structured, and they are, then how to and we have a lot of lessons learned already. Then how to empower women? in this context. And is it really possible to change war and peace narratives? And where is the role of women in the success of peace narratives? These are the issues for consideration that I want to bring for discussion. Thank you. Thank you. 
Tell you the truth, I'm uh, tempted to ignore my presentation and uh, comment on what has been said already. Starting from NATO being a tool of war, while NATO is definitely a peace network. Uh, but it is a conception, I know. And uh, the 99 uh, case, don't forget it was the 50 years of NATO, 50 years at least in the female person is a crucial age. It has overcome it, I think. <laughs> anyway, um, I have to warn you. This is a large presentation, I'll go very fast. And then I'll make the rest of the comments and how does this work? What? Hmm? Nothing? Well, what? It's, uh, it's this one. Like this one? Yes, this one. Oh, let's see. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> okay, the topic of this panel is the media. And nobody, I think, can object to the fact that the media is the most powerful weapon today, in all aspects. And even more so, if you don't see it on television, it doesn't exist. And believe me, I've had thousands of cases where I've been present at an event, and when I saw it eventually in the news, I wondered, where did that happen? Completely, but completely different. And it is there where it's decided who gets to talk, what shapes the debate, who writes, and what is important to report, or how to report it. So the media definitely shapes who we are and what we can be. And unless we realize that fact and we try to change that one way or another, I don't think we have many chances of doing anything. Let's be real. I have more comments on networking, I have more comments on the language we use and the stereotypes that are being, but I'll do that later. So, um, here's how it goes. What happens in the news. And regarding the recent U.S. elections, voters were asked whether they realized <coughs> sexist comments in the media. And where? Which media? Because let's not forget, I said earlier for the television, for the television that there is a thousand media channels today. So, um, news coverage, men are dominate the area. Who talks about what? There was a research that. Usually when I do a presentation, I use data. And I research some data. Basically from two websites. The Women's Media Center, um, it's a very interesting site. I would suggest you go into it. It was basically created by Jane Fonda and a number of other women, and they're doing very good work. Another uh, organization that does research in England, the recent, very recent elections in England. <coughs> I suppose you can read it, I don't need to repeat it. And, uh, it was interesting that the Daily Express did not picture or quote a single woman politician. Even though England has a history of women politicians. So a quarter of electoral candidates, less than a tenth media coverage. And like you mentioned before about the wife, usually the wives that the, the women that are presented in the media our wives, lovers, or in a negative other sense. <laughs> so there's another network that has been launched in 2011, Women, War, and Peace Org. And um, 
I guess we all discussed all these days that uh, war and peace in the 20th <coughs> century involved women mostly. And by war, uh, I do not, do not want to be strictly on the armed conflicts because there is war at other levels too. I believe economy is in war now too, even though there is no arms there. So um, this organization thought of uh, involving media into the education of people, and they created episodes on television involving women affected by war. And they were projected, and then eventually there was a study to define the impact of these episodes, of these television series. And unfortunately, the impact 